Hey guys, Tyson here with Adventure Rig, and today we're talking racks, specifically the Kuat NV 2.0. We have this one paired with another Kuat accessory, which is the Pivot. It's basically a swing away base so that we can swing this entire rack out of the way and open our doors on our ProMaster van. Maybe you have a pickup and you want to get to a tailgate, it would serve the same purpose. If you're looking for high res photos and an entire write up of this rack, please go to our website, it's adventurerig.com. There you can find a lot more info on this rack besides just the video. Now diving into this rack, there are a lot of really neat things that I like about it. Specifically, I think one, the fit and finish is amazing. Two, it's very easy to use. And three, it comes with a lot of really cool accessories that we'll dive into. Now you can currently see that we obviously have this mounted with two bicycles and we have it in a two inch hitch receiver. It also comes in a 1.25 inch version if you have the smaller receiver on your vehicle. With the two inch, what's cool about it is that you can actually add two more bikes to this with another accessory that they would sell goes into the back here and literally you can add two more bikes to the whole thing. With two more bikes, we should probably talk about weight. Now the rack itself, the NV 2.0 weighs about 53 pounds. The pivot weighs in at additional about 46, 47 pounds. So if you're going with just those two pieces, you're up to about hundred pounds right now. And if you're driving a small car, you may wanna pay attention to weight limits on your axle, on your hitch, that kind of stuff. Because let's say you're going out and you're taking four downhill mountain bikes with you, you're really gonna start adding up on weight. However, on the ProMaster, we don't have any issues with that. It's not really a big deal, but I do wanna mention it for people that are maybe driving a smaller vehicle. Again, that additional two bike extension only works on the two inch receiver. So I talked about the fit and finish, one of the things I really like about it. This version is the gunmetal gray. It's got a nice glossy finish to it. It may be a little bit tough to see. It blends in with the van really well. They also offer it in a gloss black version if you'd like more of that murdered out look, which is still cool. Also, you can see that we have some awesome anodized orange accents here. You can see it both here as well as down here on the wheel. Now, Callie and I really like the orange because we ride KTM motorcycles. We've kind of drank the orange Kool-Aid per se. And so a little bit of orange pop really gets our blood boiling. Also with the fit and finish, everything is just extremely smooth. I mentioned that it's that gloss finish. There's nothing on this that I've looked at that I've thought, oh, that could probably be improved upon a little bit there, or maybe they didn't spend enough time there. To me, when these bikes aren't on the rack and it's folded up, it almost kind of looks like a piece of art. It's also easy to use. It has one clamp on the front that holds your front tire. And then on the back, there's an additional clamp that actually just goes right around your wheel. To use the front one, it's very easy. You can do it with one hand. You put your thumb right on this button here. You push it, extend this all the way out, and then you can drop it all the way down. Once it's down and you want to travel, you can put this in. It can travel just like that. It actually will not fall past that point, so you don't have to worry about it going all the way down to the ground and eventually dragging. With that front one removed, you can see that on the back, all I have to do is push the ratchet in right there and this entire strap does come right out and at that point I can easily lift the bike off and I'm out ready to have some fun. Now the bikes that Callie and I have on this currently are 29 inch wheels. This easily accommodates that size. It actually goes down all the way to a 20 inch wheel. However, if you have a smaller bike like that, 20 to 24 inch wheel size, you're gonna need an adapter for this because this particular one doesn't go quite that small. However, if you have an adult bike, it's gonna fit it just fine. It also will fit a fat tire. So anything as wide as 4.8 inches, this is gonna fit onto it. The only thing that you're gonna do on the back here that ratchet needs to be a little bit wider. However, they've got you covered because they send it with you in the package, a fat bike adapter. So you have to go out and buy any more accessories. It comes with the rack ready to ride. Now, if we want to do this in reverse, you just get done with your ride. You're all tired out. You're ready to grab a beer. It's extremely easy to get the bicycle back onto the rack. You lift it up. You can get the rear wheel 
into the strap. The front one is in that nice cradle. And then with this front arm, you can pull it completely out. Once it's out, rotate it up over that front wheel. And then literally all you have to do is push down. You can hear that ratcheting. So you wanna get it on the tire as close to the fork as possible. Once it's contacted, I like to just give it a little bit extra oomph of a push. You could hear just a little bit more of a click there. And then in the back, you can just line up this strap, just kind of drop it straight down from your axle so it's centered on the wheel. Put it through, just give it a nice snug pull, and the bike is on there ready to go down the road. It's a very simple rack to use, and I think it works extremely well. On this front arm, there is an entire rubber coating around it, so it's not gonna mar your fork. This may come into play, you mountain bike guys are like, well, I'm gonna go crash anyways, but this will work with a road bike as well. So for example, this ratchet on the back, on the underside of it, it does have a nice rubber coating to it. So if you have a two or $3,000 wheel set, and you're a little bit nervous about strapping it down, this is gonna protect it, it's not gonna mar it up. On the front fork here, let me pop this bike back off. You can see if I lift this up, that on the inside, it does have a smaller cutout for a narrow tire that you'd find on a road bike. And then in the cradle right here, it also has a narrow cutout, so you can really get a nice snug fit even with a road bike or maybe a cyclocross bike. Also, another thing to mention with that cradle, it does have three different positions that you can move it into. That does require an Allen wrench, but it's not a difficult thing to do. You can actually move this and it can go up or it can drop it down a little bit. One thing that I noticed with our particular setup, the handlebars on our bikes, they just clear the seats, but it could almost be an issue if my seat maybe was just a little bit higher or Callie's was a little bit higher. Dropping that front cradle down just a little bit would prevent her handlebars from rubbing on my seat, if that was an issue, but they just clear. Now, most bikes these days you're gonna find have a dropper seat post if you're on a mountain bike, then it's really not gonna be an issue. You can easily drop the seat down, but just giving you the option, you can move that front wheel and drop it down or raise it up a little bit if you need to clear a seat on another bicycle. Now, if I remove my bike on here, we can really get into the guts of this and see exactly how nice it is without the bicycles blocking it. Like I said earlier, I think that this looks like a piece of art. I talked about the fit and finish and this kind of goes along with that. It has this nice lever right here and you can pull that down to either drop the rack down or pick it up and fold it flat if you're not gonna be carrying bicycles. But when you go and actually use this, you can just feel it, it works extremely well. There's not any grittiness to it. Even after using the rack for a couple thousand miles, I wasn't sure exactly how everything was gonna still feel versus being brand new, and it still feels great. Just pulling that lever, I can easily pick the rack up and put it flat so that it's not sticking out quite as far from just driving around. This is great if you just push on it right here with your foot, you can easily drop it back down into the loading traveling position with bikes. Again, if I pull on that lever, I can then drop it down this way. And if you have a hatchback, that's gonna give you access to be able to clear your hatch and be able to get in and out of your car, say like a Subaru or a wagon like that. One thing to note in this position, there's not any type of gas hydraulic assist. So when you do drop it down and you go to pick it back up, you are picking the weight of the bikes up or you're having to hold the weight of the bikes as you drop it down. Definitely not the end of the world. Maybe if you had another two bikes on it and you were really having to drop all that, probably get pretty heavy. But with two mountain bikes, we found that you can easily drop and raise it without any issue. Now that the bikes are off, you can really see that you have access to the pivot. And obviously with the van, like I said, we needed the pivot to go along with it so we can get into the back of it. This is another item that just works really well. It's easy to use. There's a pin right here that all you have to do is pull it out. And from there, there's a latch that you push down and it frees itself up. And at that point, you can spin this all the way out to that position right there. So it opens up about 90 degrees for you. So at that point, you can easily get into your vehicle, open doors and have access to the inside without having a rack in your way. This piece here stays pretty tucked up against the rear bumper. So you can easily get in and out and have this a nice open space. Hank's in here sleeping. He's just wanting to say hi. Sorry, Hank. 
there are people around and we can't just let him run around because he'll find dead deer to eat and it's just not a good situation. Another thing to mention possibly here with opening this door against the rack, I found that our door can just contact the rack right here because our door on the ProMaster actually will swing completely open and almost touch the back side of the van here. That's just one issue that I found because of the ProMaster. Something I would do is just put a little bit of foam on the rack right here so that if the door opens up into it, it's not gonna damage the rack or the door. And then to close it, it's just as easy. You just pull it, it goes right into place. It stops on its own where it needs to, and you pull that lever, that locks it in. And then at that point, you can drop in this safety pin. And what the safety pin does, it's basically gonna prevent, let's say that that lever opened up while driving, having that pin in is gonna prevent it from actually swinging open where you're looking in your side view mirror to see your bicycles dangling out there. That's gonna prevent it. So always make sure that you have that in before driving. One thing that I will mention here is that the only problem that I've seen is with the lock that they provide. When you go to open it, you can see that it just barely misses where the pin drops in. If I had that pushed all the way in, it would just hit it. However, it does rotate pretty easily, so it will rotate out of the way even if you do hit it. But I like to just make sure that that's pulled all the way out so that I do clear all of that because I don't want this all marred up. It's an expensive piece of equipment. I want it looking new for the rest of its life. I prefer just to pull that out, but like you can see, it's not gonna damage anything by just rolling over it. If you're looking for some measurements, we can give those to you. With regards to measurements, with the pivot on, you can see that it actually adds a little bit of length to the back of the vehicle here. So instead of just dropping down to where my hitch was actually the lowest point, now I've got the bottom of the pivot that actually hangs below the hitch. So measuring off of this piece of metal here and down, this is gonna end up being about an inch and three quarters lower than your actual hitch. So out here, you can see where that really starts to play into effect, because I also have a little bit of a bolt that's hanging down. So if you have a vehicle that already sits really low to the ground, and then you add this, once you start going into parking lots, anything that has a steep incline, you may want to start to pay attention to how low that stuff sits at the back of your vehicle. They've really thought this process through to keep this stable. Right here, you have another knob. And with this knob, it actually on the inside of the rack, you have a small ball bearing that's built into the very corner. When you tighten this knob down, it pushes that ball bearing out and against the receiver, basically keeping everything nice and snug. So that's what's leading to not having a lot of wiggle room here. So on the NV 2.0, you have that knob. Now on the pivot, you also have something that is lending to not a lot of wiggle as well. You can see the bolt that goes through the hitch. Well, on the pivot itself, in this hole, there are threads and that bolt threads into it. Again, pulling everything together to keep it from wiggling and jiggling and vibrating and keeping it smooth. You hate going down the road with everything sitting back there going crazy. Kuat has really thought that all the way through. The last thing that I mentioned in the beginning of the video was the accessories. And that's really in my mind what sets this rack apart because it comes with a lot of very cool accessories. Not only does it come with the basics, so it comes with the lock and the pin that are gonna attach this to the pivot. The pivot comes with a lock and pin that's gonna attach that to your vehicle. So you don't have to run out and buy a lock because you don't want anyone to steal it. It comes with it. Also, it has this amazing accessory called the trail dock. Now this is something I'm always trying to figure out. I've thought about in our trailer, adding something so that we can put a bike off the ground and actually work on it. Same with the van, how are you gonna do that? Well, the NV 2.0 has it covered. This comes with what they call the trail dock. If I flip this lever, you can see that I can actually pull this arm out and then flip this lever back in. If I loosen this piece here, I can then rotate this out and down like that. Once that's rotated down, just snug it back in. Open this up. If I just twist that knob, this has a spring in it, actually opens that up for you. And at that point, wait for it, because this is freaking awesome. 
I can easily get a bike on it off the ground and now I'm ready to work. You can obviously take wheels off, change tubes, lube a chain, adjust derailleurs. It's not a problem. Everything clears, meaning the pedals right here. I just have clipless egg beaters on here right now with a small platform, but I think even if you had a large flat platform pedal, you would clear this no problem. Now, it does have just a little bit of give to it with this arm. It's not the strongest arm out there. I mean, it's not gonna be, say, a two inch diameter piece of steel, but for this purpose, it absolutely rocks. I usually find myself carrying around a complete other stand. That's one more item that I don't have to pack with me anymore, which is amazing. I hate taking all this crap. I just wanna take the essentials, and the Quat NV 2.0 really helps me with that. Some forward thinking from Quat here, just like this entire rack, they do sell a base for this accessory. So if you wanted to use this at home, you can. You can pull this entire piece off of the rack very easily, just pops out. You could put it in its separate stand and you can use this in the garage. Again, cutting down on the number of items you have in your life. It's just as easy to get it off if I just rotate this knob and pull out, that opens right up and I'm able to pull the entire bike off of the stand. Now I've got my new tire on, I've got my chain lubed. I'm a happy rider, I'm ready to go hit the trails. More accessories that we can talk about. If I drop this rack back down and I put a bicycle back on it, this one's probably one of my favorite. Actually, I don't know, it's a toss up. The trail dock is pretty damn awesome, but this is really cool too. Yeah, I'm not a magician, this comes with it. It is a lock and cable that I can put through the rear triangle on the bike and lock it as easy as that to the rack. Each tray comes with its own cable and at that point you're ready to go down the road knowing that your bikes are safe. It's just as easy to get it unlocked. They provide the keys right here. What's great about this is that all of the keys are the same. Also, when I open this back up, and I go to store it, it's very easy to stick the cable back into this tray and it has a little bit of a magnetic grip on it here. So once I store that and I push this all in, it's not coming back out. So if you guys aren't tired of me talking yet, then you're crazy because this has been a really long review, but there's been a lot to talk about with this rack. You're gonna spend a lot of money on it and you wanna know that what you're buying is quality stuff. And I definitely think you're getting that with the Quat rack. They make a lot of different versions, so if you don't want the highest end, their other price point items are still very good racks. You can check other additional racks out on coatracks.com. If you guys are still with us, we really appreciate it. Again, I know this was a long one. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. Also, if you're wondering where we are or what we're up to, please find us on social media at Adventure Rig, both Facebook and Instagram. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. We appreciate the support. Thanks again for watching. I'm Tyson with Adventure Rig.